Well, good morning. I want to say welcome to all of our visitors who are joining us today, including my mom and my dad. One more round of applause for my mom, who's over there. She loves all that attention, let me tell you. Great to have our visitors who are with us today, especially never a visitor, always glad to have them back home. Put your hands together for our seminarian, Alex Godet. Lots of prayers coming your way. It, uh, Alex uh, is halfway through his theological formation. It seems like it's uh, been forever since he's been in the seminary, but uh, it's nice to have one of our own uh, so close. Just imagine that two years, perhaps, uh, Alex will be standing behind this altar uh, in a different capacity uh, and actually celebrating Mass in, in our own parish. Two short years, so um, it's a great gift to, to, to be able to walk with you. CPE, uh, Clinical Pastoral Education, it is the make or break time as a seminarian. Um, you're going to either come out of CPE ready for the priesthood or you're going to come out of uh, CPE uh, clearer that maybe God's calling you to something else. I, I see it every year. This is my 10th year of walking with guys through uh, the summers just like this. I know for me, when I was a seminarian, CPE was a, it was a really significant moment. It's probably the moment where I chose uh, to say yes to the Lord and um, and. and in a, in, a, in a clear way. I, I was not turning back. What did that for me was just being with people in real life. Because, you know, when you're in a hospital, when you're facing death, when people are sick, when people that you love are sick, when you're sick, when you're worried about people, whenever you reach a, a spot in life where you're just facing something that's bigger than you, there's not a whole lot of fancy prayer going on. It sounds like this. I need help. Where are you? Or here's the big one. You ready? Why? Why do you let cancer happen? Why do, why do you let bad things happen to good people? Why is my life unfolding this way? All those questions just kind of pop up from the heart. I prayed those prayers, just like you. We all reach moments in life where we need God. Now, whether you consider yourself holy or not, whether you consider yourself close to the Lord or not. And like in those moments, it doesn't really matter. It's just you and God. And I would love to tell you that in every one of those prayers, every time that you do that, you're going to hear the voice of God sound just like Charleston Heston come right back to you, right? I am here. I will dramatically heal or, or whatever it is. But you know what? God, God doesn't always answer God doesn't always fix. God doesn't always do what we need him to do. Amen? So let's tackle that head on today. Let's just go right at it. Why? It's a good question. Because that's when faith is needed. And that's a really important word for us that often just gets kind of tossed out there. People just say, oh, we just have faith or just believe. Well, here's the thing. When you're facing something that's bigger than you, when you're facing something that's got you worried, when, you got, when you're facing something like death or sickness or someone that you love, like those, like those little words, like, hey, just have faith, like they don't really capture our hearts. They don't really fit. Like we're looking for something deeper than that. Amen? So that's why Saint... That's why the church gives us this letter from Hebrews, the second reading that was proclaimed for us today. Everybody grab your brown book. Everybody grab the brown missalette. I want to go to page 20, Hebrews chapter 11. Page 20, Hebrews chapter 11. What is this thing called faith, and what are we supposed to do in moments like that? What can ground us in the experience of life when we're asking why, and we need help, and we need a big old God in a big old way? Page 20. I'm going to pick it up in Hebrews chapter 11. First line is one that is significant for us. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to start with the word brothers and sisters. We're going to all read it together as brothers and sisters. Y'all ready? Here we go. Brothers and sisters, 
Faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Look at that sentence right there. Faith is a realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. All right, so when you have a moment in life when you're facing something big, let's just stop right now for a second. Let's just pretend, just for the sake of the visual, that this podium represents something big in your life. This represents something that you're facing, a situation that you're facing. Maybe somebody that you love is sick. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you're in debt. Maybe your marriage is on the rocks. Maybe you don't have money to pay your bills. Maybe you're 40 and life doesn't look at 40 the way you thought it would look at 40. Or maybe just whatever. Maybe you, what are you facing right now in your life? You're looking at it. It's bigger than you. You can't get by it. What is Hebrews saying? Hebrews is saying that when you and I face those situations in life, we're hoping for something. I want something to happen. I want somebody to get well. I want somebody not to die. I want there to be peace in my family. I want there to be harmony in my marriage. I want something to happen. I am hoping that something's going to happen. That's what Hebrews is saying. So I'm hoping. Go back to the sentence. Look at the line. It says, it's a realization of what is hoped for. I'm hoping in something and evidence of things not seen. But I can't see it happening. That's when we need faith. So I want God to do something, but I can't see what he's doing. There are going to be moments in your life like that. There are going to be moments in our life when we're asking God, begging God, pleading with God to do something, but we just don't see God doing anything. Ever been there? Ever ask God to do something and just doesn't happen the way you thought? Doesn't happen when you needed it or how you hoped it for? Three things we want to remember. Number one, faith is about a person. Say that with me. Faith is about a person. One more time. Faith is about a person. You're praying to a person. Now we know that faith includes the teachings of the church, theological statements. We know that the faith includes worship and the, the way that the, the priests do things and why we do things in the Catholic church. We know that that's all about faith, right? However, fundamentally, in the moments in life where we need God to do something, we're calling on a God. He's got a name. His name is Jesus Christ. Faith is about a person. I need him to do something in this situation in my life. I need a miracle here, and I'm asking a person to get involved in this situation. Faith is about a person. However, number two, that person doesn't act like other people. Say that with me. That person doesn't act like other people. One more time. That person doesn't act like other people. Isaiah 55, he says... My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. God's timing isn't our timing. God's ways are not our ways. God doesn't act like Father Mark. Thank God. (laughs) Right? Why? I mean, you're important, aren't you? Your prayer is important. Amen? Amen? Right? This is really important. So why doesn't God do what we ask him to do? Why, God, why doesn't God do it when we ask him to do it? If I'm important to God, the scriptures clearly say that, Psalm 139, right? And, and, and my prayer is important to God, Romans 8. Then why doesn't God do what I need him to do, when I need him to do it, and how I need him to do it? Well, here's the thing. Everybody look at me. When you're facing something in life, sometimes that's the only thing you can see, right? Now, everybody look at Alex. Alex, for a moment, and only this moment, is God. Now, everybody look at me. Can I see Alex? What can I see? I can just see my problem. I can just see my issue. That's all I can see. Sometimes in life, with the way, this is the way the circumstances are. The only thing you can see is right in front of you. Does that mean that God is not there? No. 
Now, everybody look at Alex. Can Alex see my situation? Absolutely. How do you know that? Because you have a different vantage point than I do. See that person? He's not like other people. Praise God. He sees the whole picture. When God sees our situation, when God sees this thing that we're hoping for, God is not limited to our vantage point. He's not a person in the physical sense in limitations. He's God. So God sees. He sees my past. He sees how I got here. He sees this thing I'm facing in life. He also sees my future because God looks at the whole big picture all at one point. He's not limited by anything. Amen? He's, our faith is in him. Our faith is not just in the outcome. I need you to do this for me, God. I need you to fix it just, this situation or, or heal this person or, or, or bring reconciliation where I don't see reconciliation or, or show me a solution. No. See, God, our faith is in him, and he sees the whole picture. The whole thing at the same time. Now, here's the cool thing about God. God cares about everything in our life. So a lot of times, we're sitting over here, and we can't see God, and I can't see what he's doing. All I can see is this situation. However, a little audience participation here. Can you see? Put the book up. Let's pretend that he's a blessing. Children are blessings, right? Amen? You always act like a blessing. I got your mom over there. Stay right here, okay? So sometimes God has to put blessings in place. Sometimes God has to put people in place. Sometimes God has to put resources in place. Now God's doing all this over here, right? Now where are we? We're over here. I can't see that, can I? I just see this big old thing. I'm getting mad because God's not doing anything, right? Is God doing something? Sure is. God's over here. Putting blessings in place and people in place and resources in place. And eventually God's going to come through for me. Why? Because God's timing is not my timing. Sometimes God has other people that he needs to be working on in order for this thing to happen in our life. Sometimes it's not just us, it's affecting. He's got to affect other people. And so sometimes what happens is we get frustrated because we're sitting over here and we're saying, God, you're not doing anything. I'm going to give up on you. And God's saying, I'm doing something. Just be patient. I'm putting things in place so that you can receive a blessing. I've got embassy, okay? Faith. It's a realization of things that are hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Faith is in a person. And when God is not acting like you would like him to act or when you would like him to act or how you would like him to act, when you're waiting, remember this. There's a difference between waiting for God to do something and with God as he does something. Let me say that again. There's a difference between waiting for God to do something versus waiting with God as he's doing something. So in our life, in those moments where we need God to do something over here, and when we get frustrated because he's not doing it, what are we supposed to do? Well, come over here and sit next to Alex, right? That's always the wisdom, sit next to Alex. You come to God. And you say, hey, God, show me what you're doing. God, I, I don't see you doing everything, anything over here. So we just go to God and say, God, I'm going to wait with you. You show me what are you doing. See, God sees our whole life, wants our whole life, wants your happiness more than you do. Also understand this. When God sees your life on earth, he sees your life in heaven. Here's the good news. We're not supposed to live on earth forever. God is never surprised by death. Neither should you. So sometimes God doesn't answer our earthly prayer because he's got all of our salvation in mind. I want to especially, as I close today, encourage anybody in church today who has been begging God to do something and it hasn't happened yet. 
I'm talking to you right now. Because you woke up this morning and in a sense you said, God, I need you to say something to me. Well, he's talking to you right now. And the Lord is telling you that he's doing something in your life. Just be patient with him and with you and with other people. And wait with him. When you walk out of church today, I want you to say to God, God, show me what you're going to do in my life today. You may not fix this situation, but I know you're going to do something today. God, show me what you're doing in my life today. That's faith. He's got a name. And as we continue with Mass, I encourage you to put your life right here on this altar where we put things, God changes things, he gives it right back to us. So that even if we're crying out for God right now and we need him to do something in our life, let's trust that we can have faith because the person that we're praying to is faithful in our lives. Amen?